Hey guys, and welcome to the 14th video in the series, Becoming Well Read. It's a video series where I talk about one of the books I've recently read in an attempt to become well read. In the 13th episode, we spoke about Politically Correct Holiday Stories by James Finn Gardner. So if you want to see that episode, you should click here or click on the link down in the description to see that. But in this, the 14th episode, we are going to talk about Oliver Sacks' book, Uncle Tungsten. Now the copyright on this book is 2001 and Oliver Sacks died in the 2010s. This book is basically an autobiography of his young life growing up but as he was growing up as a young boy. I just want to get it out of the way right now that I didn't really like this book. I do like reading Oliver Sacks, don't get me wrong. An Anthropologist on Mars and The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat are two of my favorite books, but this, I wouldn't count them among his best works. In this book, he recounts the story of his childhood and different things that happened to him, mainly dealing with his family. Let's just get right into the title, Uncle Tungsten. Uh, this refers to his uncle who actually worked with tungsten, the metal, uh, to make filaments for light bulbs. And he basically tells the story of his childhood in a chemically oriented way. He goes through the different metals and the different elements of the periodic table, speaks about how they're important and what he found out about them, about how he became a scientist and a chemist at a very young age, doing experiments himself in his own little laboratory with the chemicals that his family members would give him. On top of this being an autobiography of his young life, uh, there are also parts where he talks about how certain chemicals were found out, like how certain radioactive chemicals uh, were found and how some of the earth metals were found and discovered, the different processes and scientists involved in that. I believe that that writing in this book left the book a bit dry. One of my favorite parts in this book was when he talked about how he had to go away to a school. The war had started, World War II, and he was sent away to live somewhere else. His family was actually Jewish, but he was sent away to this other school where he lived there with other young boys, and he was picked on a lot, not only by the other boys in the school, but also by the headmaster. They would starve the kids a little bit. It wasn't like that good of a story but the way he told it was compelling. Some of the funny things I liked about this book he talked about how when he was playing with the chemicals learning different things how to make different gases uh, there were some gases that had really bad smells and at one point he created so much of this gas that his family had to evacuate the home because it smelled so bad. Another thing I found interesting was when he spoke about developing his own photographs and how he would use different chemical reactions on the photograph that you know to get the picture to develop and how he would make different colors come out and have different effects on the photos very interesting um i've read about this before and you always see like the dark rooms in films when they're developing old photographs nowadays we all have digital phones but it's important to know, you know, how that technology started and where it came from, uh, capturing images. And so that was also an interesting part of this book. His father was a doctor. Uh, now everybody gets paid with money, but his father, uh, being a doctor, mostly to the Jewish community, a lot of times he would make house calls. Nowadays in America, doctors don't really make house calls. So reading about how his doctor would go out and help out a family, you know, examine either someone who was sick or just give a check out to everybody. And how that family, sometimes they'd pay in money, but a lot of times they'd pay in food and other things. How there was more of a bartering system. I also felt like there was more of a human connection uh, that his father had with the other people. Uh, there were certain places that his father would always go uh, to eat food and he knew where all the best places were to eat because he knew so many people due to being a doctor. Everybody in the sex household, his siblings, his parents, his aunts, they were all scientists or doctors or chemists. He spoke about uncles who went away to, uh, I think it was deal with diamonds or mining certain chemicals. It seems like that was ingrained in the family that 
he was either going to be a doctor or a scientist of some sort or a teacher or something of that nature. The book goes into a lot of chemical history, the history of chemistry, how the atom was discovered, how uh, radiation was discovered, how the atomic model was discovered in the different strata of electrons uh, by bombarding atoms with energy and watching the spectrum of light that it gave off. Some of it was very interesting and some of it was a bit bland. So I think you really have to like the subject matter to really get into this book. But overall, what did I think about Uncle Tungsten? It's interesting because Oliver Sacks is one of my favorite authors when it comes to his neurological case studies. In the other two books um, I've read and reviewed, also links over here if you want to see that. One of them was Anthropologist on Mars and the other one was The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat. Also, I'll put those links in the description for you to see. But this book, seeing where he came from left me with a different feeling of who he was. I guess in his older years, he changed a lot, but seeing how his time at Brayford Academy, which was where uh, they mistreated him, how he lost his religion and how he came back home uh, different, more cut off from his family and wanting to be alone and brooding. I think it's times like those that shape what a person becomes. That's Oliver Sacks' Uncle Tungsten. Would I recommend this book? I think I would recommend it if you like chemistry. If you've read Oliver Sacks before and you're interested in him as a person, it is an autobiography, so I would recommend you to check it out. But if you don't necessarily like chemistry or history in that sense, probably don't pick this up. And so for the 15th episode of Becoming Well Read, we're just going to jump into this, the complete collection of Edgar Allan Poe. And we're actually going to just... Talk about the first story, The Unparalleled Adventure of One Hand's Fall. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, click on the links that I've provided down below if you want to see more. There's also a playlist which I'll link, which has all the episodes. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.